A little bit to start off with, the whole carcass is one of those things that we used to see moved around the country, utilized a lot in different forms or fashions instead of now primals and subprimals. And when we start talking about primals, subprimals, individual muscles, those kind of things, you probably need a little definition of those. So we start with the whole side here, and as we look at the side, there's four major primals. The round, the loin, the rib, and the chuck. When we start talking about minor cuts out of the carcass, we'll talk about those more on the belly side of the animal through here, the flank, the plate, the brisket area, and the foreshank. Those would be considered minor primals out of the carcass, the round, loin, rib, and chuck being the major ones. When we talk about a subprimal, we're actually talking about if we took this rib, the whole rib, and took just the ribeye roll out of this portion here. That would be a subprimal. When we start thinking about subprimals from this carcass, if we just go to subprimals the, they, and we start looking at those, this top sirloin, the strip loin, the rib, and looking on the inside, beneath this kidney fat that's in here, the tenderloin are those four cuts that are most commonly used at a lot of food service operations. We start talking about the sirloin, that's where we're gonna get those top sirloin steaks. We talk about the strip loin, we would get New York strip, Kansas City strip steaks, those type applications or steaks from here. If we took the tenderloin out, those would be tenderloin steaks. Now we could do something a little differently if we didn't have all boneless applications. We could actually take the whole area of the loin here that would be referred to as a short loin. And if we did that, you could actually cut across the bones and the muscle here to make porterhouse steaks T-bone steaks from this area as it goes down and the tenderloin gets a little smaller. So we could do one or the other. You can't do both off the same side. And so packers work on both of those and make both of those all day long, essentially from different sides of the animal. Then if we look at the rib, the other major subprimal or primal out of here, and we took a ribeye roll out of here, we could cut ribeye steaks from this area, and we could also use this whole portion here if we were making prime rib. Now you can see on this carcass, there's already a separation made between the loin and the rib. That's done between the 12th and 13th rib, or the only place on the carcass that it can be officially graded is between the 12th and 13th ribs. And so we take a, a saw and saw through the bones, then we use a knife to complete that cut to do what we call rib the carcass, which just means separate between the 12th and 13th rib. When we do that, besides exposing this ribeye for grating, we've also then separated the carcass into a hindquarter and a forequarter. And really the forequarter is a little heavier, it's about 52% and the hindquarter is about 48% but it's almost splitting the carcass into equal quarters if we think about then there being four quarters of a beef carcass.